Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Nick and we are back with some Taylor Swift today. This time, Folklore Era live in the MetLife Stadium. Okay, so this is Taylor Swift at her best performing my favorite content of hers, which is Folklore. Uh, so far from what I've seen, I just, of course, really dig acoustic stuff. I love folk music. I love her lyrics. I've listened to most of the songs by now. And this is brought to you by the one and only Tall, who is one of my patrons, has been here since day one um, on this channel. So thank you again, Tall. Um, just a quick uh, thing here. I, a lot of my Taylor Swift content has been blocked recently, so I am trying to see if I can turn down the opacity or the transparency of my videos. I'm testing a filter, basically to see if that helps at all. So I do apologize that you're not gonna see like 100% of the video, but I think you'll be able to see enough to experience what I'm experiencing. Um, but I'm sorry if that bothers you, this is sort of a test run. But yeah, I hope you enjoy. We're about to jump in, it's about 30 minutes, so um, I'm not gonna stop a ton, but I am gonna react, react along the way. And uh, yeah, just a quick reminder to of course subscribe to me, like this video, leave me a comment. It makes my day and I love hearing from all of you guys. All right, get your ERA tickets tour now, or get your ERA tickets now. Staring at the sunset. Or you could begin at the beginning. And in that case, please picture me in the trees. I hit my peak at seven. Feet in the swing over the creek. I was too scared to jump in. But I was high in the sky with Pennsylvania under me. Are there still beautiful things? Sweet tea in the summer. Cross your heart and won't tell no other. And though I can't recall your face, I've still got love for you. Your braids make a pattern. Love you to the moon and to Saturn. Passed down like folk songs. The love lasts so long. Okay, before this starts, I love that Taylor is sort of like sharing her early childhood memories, you know, in the creek, too afraid to jump in. This beautiful setting with the moon coming down. And the visuals are stunning here. Ooh, great set. Ooh. Is this the one? Listening to these songs that I now know, I've added a lot of Taylor Swift songs to my Spotify playlists, 
uh, the ones that I've listened to on um, on YouTube. And so it's actually cool for the first time being able to kind of like, hey, I know the lyrics that are coming along. Um, that's that's pretty awesome. She sounds so good live. I, I have to say, this set design is so cool. This little like cabin out in the woods um, that we see in so many of the lyric videos uh, for folklore era. This is awesome. It's awesome to see. Comes the guitar. Okay. Does anyone know, what, anyone know what kind of uh, acoustic guitar she plays? Is it like a Martin or? So we brought the folklore cabin to Jersey. Can I borrow someone else's guitar? This one's not working. <laughs> Does anyone have an extra? Oh, there now it is. Can you hear that? Can see the set guy, the, the sound guy walking across the stage. Um, so <laughs> Someone's like, get Taylor a guitar now. Uh, Folklore was an album that was, it was, it was an album I started about two days into the pandemic. It was, you know, we all had our escapism tactics in the pandemic, and this and um, lots of white wine, that was my escapism tactic. <laughs> <laughs> Not thinking about what was really going on, um, but what I did with this album was—it um, was a bit different than what I how I'd approached other albums because I—I I don't know if you know this, but I've, I've tended to skew on the um, excruciatingly personal, autobiographical side of songwriting historically. With folklore, I decided, you know what? People do this in TV shows, they do this in movies, maybe I'll just write characters and I'll have those characters feel these feelings and and I can do like story arcs and so there's this, this story arc on folklore that's, that I affectionately have titled the, teen, the, the Teenage Love Triangle. Do you know about this? I do know about it. So the Teenage Love Triangle takes place um, in a small town probably in the month of August. <laughs> I get these references. Oh my god. And there's this teenage boy named James. And 
he really, really screws things up with the love of his life. And um, Fucking James, he has man. to really profusely and sincerely apologize to try to win her back. And her name is Betty. perfect album. Um, I am realizing now that I don't think I've listened to Betty. That'll be very embarrassing if I have, but I don't think I have. It was the one out of the love triangle I didn't get to. Um, I'm racking my brain. I'm really hoping I'm right, but um, because that would be really sad if I had listened to it and didn't remember. But um, So this is my first time listening to Betty. I'll definitely have to go back and do like a full video on that. Um, but dude, she just connects with her fans in such a very holistic way. She's having the time of her life up there, and everyone's night is, is made basically for the year. Uh, that seems to be sort of the aura she gives off. I was nowhere to be found. I hate the crowds, you know that. Plus, I saw you dance with him. You heard the rumors from me, Ness. You can't believe the word she says. Yeah, sure. 
lost and then love fought for again, right? Standing in my cardigan, kissing in your car again. I think those are the lyrics. Um, sorry if I messed those up, but damn, I liked that one. Does anyone think that the Folk Four um, cabin looks a little like uh, Little House on the Prairie, the set? Or Sarah Plain and Tall? against all ads is a woman who moves into this sort of illustrious house, Great Gatsby's house, and then is sort of like shunned at first for being a woman um, and having all of those things. Um, who would, would like, without that last great American dynasty, you know, without that risk that person took, you know, we never know what would have happened. Um, it's such a powerful song, and I'm really glad I covered that here on the channel earlier. I learned a lot from people in the comments, because uh, my original interpretation was a bit wrong.
singing voice is absolutely incredible. Um, just captivated by that little falsetto, little falsetto that she does every once in a while. Um, damn it, Taylor. Always doing it to us, right? I love, love the, the water and the train at the beginning. It just transport you, transports you to like a different world, literally a folklore world. It is so, so, so fun to watch. Actually, very fast in that dress too. My God. <laughs> okay, Taylor. prefer red wine or white wine? That's the real question. I think I like white wine in the summer or with like some fish, uh, but like on a hot summer day, but then oh, a nice glass of red wine once in a while just hits. Um, like Merlot, Cab, ugh. Like a bottle of wine, pastel colors now too it's like turned into this like amorphous landscape it's so so it's like an impressionist painting You're coming. 
right there. So let's go right back into it. imagery. If I'm on fire, you'll be made of ashes too. Like what a fucking amazing line. Sorry for the F-bomb, but I think it's deserving right there. Mm. That's a pretty apt metaphor for who Taylor Swift is. She is like a whirlpool because once you get into her sort of current, there's no way of escaping. She is a vortex that sucks you in, in a good way. But um, she is a black hole. She will take everything around her and sort of destroy it. Um, I'm sorry, I don't want this to come off as negative. It was meant to be a positive thing. But she like sucks you in. Um, yeah. Think about all the, the people that she's just, like, roasted their careers. Um, she's stronger than ever. Yeah. Her gravity is, is next level.
This is truly an anthem. It's truly an anthem. and said I was your favorite. The fairy dust. Okay, so I think that's it. That's what Tall had given me to define the folklore era live. I got a peek inside the mystery box of Taylor Swift Live, um, performing my favorite content from her so far, which is folklore. I just think it's inherently mystical, which is self-described by her. Fictional characters that are relatable, eerie, haunting, that drive a message home to the audience with catchy, chilling, musical elements to it at times. And then of course Taylor the performer comes out and just is in her element basically at all times. Um, like she looks like she belongs on stage. Um, she just looks so comfortable and is able to connect with every single person there and at home. You know this was filmed a while ago, uh, a couple months ago, and here I am enjoying it and just grinning from ear to ear. So thanks for joining me on this little adventure. If you liked the longer format, please let me know. Um, I hope the transparency of the video didn't bother you too much. I'm assuming most of you have witnessed this before, uh, so it's more about going on the journey with me. Um, but thank you again. Just a quick reminder to um, potentially Subscribe to me and like this video and leave me a comment if you already haven't. I'd really appreciate that. It helps me out a lot. I do have a Patreon and that's how I support myself here and make Taylor Swift content. Um, I will leave a link in the description. Uh, but most importantly, make sure to go support Taylor. Get tickets to her tour. 
go like blow your you know expectations out of the water with her music. Uh, she definitely deserves it. She's a force. And thank you again to Tall for making this happen.